your team. That is. And again, there are a couple of possessions from being six and one. And that would that would make them a top five team in the country. This team is that good. They're playing. They're continuing to play toward that level and show you everyone what they're capable of being. RJ Duhart and Armando Bacon jump setter. Elliot Cadeau controls. And away we go from the Smith Center out of the holiday break. Here's Harrison Ingram, the Stanford transfer up top. Akon looking for a post up. They move it to Cormac Ryan. One thing that's different about this Tar Heel team this year is that just the ball's moving. And it seems to find that guy quite a bit. <laughs> RJ Davis, who's scoring in bunches. Hey, we check out the starters for Charleston Southern. The names to know start with RJ Johnson, the leading scorer. He's a fourth year player from Matthews, North Carolina, outside of Charlotte. And then Tajay Kelly, this guy, the junior forward at 6'7", 253. He gets 15 and eight a game and was preseason all-conference. Meanwhile, for the Heels, you know, Bacon and Davis, they've got the first two buckets, setting the tone for Carolina. Great start to this game by the Tar Heels. Again, the ball is just moving there. I want to look inside and take advantage of Armando inside, but the ball's going to move. They're not going to force it into him, and whoever's open is just taking shots. DJ Patrick, the transfer from USF and one of four in double figures for Charleston Southern, buries the three to get them on the board. That's one of the hallmarks of Carolina offensively this year. It is moving. Ingram misses for deep. This is a top 10 offense in the country, according to Ken Palm's metrics. Diving bid by Ingram. Gotta love that effort. And you say this when you watch Carolina on film. This team plays really hard. They're playing together and they're playing really hard. Uh, I, I think that the issue isn't just defensive. They're not finishing possessions right now. That's the key. This is not the same old Carolina team that used to dominate you on the glass. This team is only out rebounding their opponents by two rebounds a game, and that's a really low number for Carolina. And for as good as they are, ninth in the country, you ask Hubert Davis the areas to improve the rest of the year. Defense and rebounding will dig into that. Davis, transition three. He's not a guard in the country playing better than this young man. He, he's put it all together. His confidence is through the roof, and you can see with his hot start early here, knocking down his first two J's. 23 plus, as we said, in seven straight games for R.J. Davis. Patrick turns the corner, lost it on the way up, and recovers. Great job there, just gathering yourself. Harrison Ingram got a hand on that, deflected it. And Patrick Redshirt Jr. from Powder Springs, Georgia. Ingram can't connect on another triple try and the rebound secured by R.J. Johnson and Charleston Southern's got it down by two the first two and a half minutes. Johnson for three. Wide left. Baycott clears it. See what adjustments the Tar Heels make. Baycott tried another three. He's got two of them this year. <laughs> he's two for four, so he's shooting 50%. I guess he said percentage-wise, it's okay to take that. I know Hubert want him, wants him inside early to establish himself in this game. And Charleston Southern seemed to be content with allowing Carolina four and five men to shoot those threes. That is Alon Sumler, sophomore and a transfer from Northern Kentucky, their third leading scorer at 11 a game. But he's been a whole lot hotter than that recently. I think he's as good a scorer outside of R.J. Davis as there is on the floor tonight. He can really score the basketball. Carolina needs to get to him early because he can get hot and get going. And he's got a quick trigger as well. Tried it from three, too strong for Alon Sumler. Now Cormac Ryan going to work on D.J. Patrick. Backs it out to R.J. Davis who gets a ball screen from Baycott. Davis again. He's come out cooking. Down another three there again. They're not up because they're sagging off because they want Ingram and Baycott to take those jump shots. And so when they come off those dribble handoffs and those screens, those threes will be there all day. Scary proposition for RJ Davis, who knocked down five of them against Oklahoma. 23 points, four rebounds, five assists, three steals, and he didn't turn the basketball over once. There's Tajay Kelly. You love his game. I do. When, when their offense breaks down, when they guard play, they can't create off the bounce. They're going to throw it inside to Tajay Kelly. And his size as a four man, his ability to shoot that mid range shot. Davis, with the left hand gets the roll, and RJ Davis has an early 10. You got to rotate over there. He puts pressure on the defense. They didn't cut him off. And 
It doesn't matter, left, right hand, mid-range, three. He's he's just got it all. He's put it all together this year. This could be a big time scoring night for RJ Davis. Ten already of the dozen for the heels, the first five minutes. What's new? Nothing. <laughs> Pick and pop. Here's Duhart, the five man, not known for his scoring. And Carolina pushes up three. Davis is feeling it. Squared up Johnson, moved it for Baycott, and now the freshman Cadeau wraps it around for Ryan. Great job coming off the stagger screen there. Ryan comes off, just tur curls right there in the mid-range, knocks down the free throw line jumper. Cormac Ryan, who had 20, broke out of that shooting slump against Kentucky on four triples. Followed it up against Oklahoma with 13. Patrick contested, got to rise up over Cadeau. Davis pushes. And double figures already. Taking Johnson off the bounce. Baycott says he wants post entry from Ryan. Tipped away by Duhart. Stays with the heels when we come back. Carolina by five and R.J. Davis with ten already in Chapel Hill. Are we with Eric's family? And may we all be empowered by the way he lived and how he treated others. Just an amazing guy. So giving to, to others, and just always called him a gentle giant. A guy you played against, and in many ways, basketball-wise, came up with. Yes. Same time, same class, yeah. even. As Eric Montross. Harrison Ingram draws a foul with the shot clock winding down. You had some battles with Eric Montross on the court. <laughs> Did I ever? Uh... Com competed against him so much, and, and, you know, like I said, in high school, and obviously going, him going to Carolina, and, and myself going to Wake. It was just, uh, he was a competitor, and he's one of those guys you didn't enjoy competing against him. And I have memories of him in many different ways, so many different memories, and from competing against him, as you see here, uh, funny story about that shot. It's a loose ball, I throw it to my teammate, we start to break. Eric Montrose pushes my head, he uses my head to get off the ground to run back to transition. Defense, uh, many battles, but so much respect for who he is and what he was, and just a tremendous honor. Well, we will remember his legacy, and he will be close to the hearts of so many here for a long time. The game back in Chapel Hill, where Son Nimley had to take a timeout under some pressure from Carolina. He was leading by six in the first six minutes here at the Smith Center. And this is what's different about this Carolina team is that they're they're getting after you on the defensive end of the floor. They extend pressure. They use that to such success in their lone ACC game of the season so far against Florida State. It's the way they want to play. They're, they, they're much better defensively and it's creating havoc. You can see here. I mean, look at this. Nearly got a 10 count and then force a Johnson turnover and the heels run. Here's Davis driving, bumps, no foul called. Kelly clears it, and here's Patrick over the timeline. Patrick feeling good early, rims that one out, and the rebound to Jalen Washington, the sophomore backup big from Gary, Indiana. The Carolina guards are going to get plenty of shots with the. You see the way they're playing the Carolina big. They're sagging off, so they're able to turn a corner like Ingram does here. High off the glass and rolled off. Washington to stick back. And that's what happens when you switch that. Guard comes down, gets deep in the paint, forces you to switch. You challenge your big to win that battle on a guard. He has the guard on him at that time. Washington does just that. You mentioned rebounding for Carolina earlier. Plus two on the glass early and their first offensive rebound. Something you're going to monitor throughout the night and we're going to sink our team yeah. into. That's a big part of the story for the heels going forward. Withers muscles down that rebound. And Jalen Withers threw a foul as well on Gaddis Heath in off the bench for the Buccaneers. This is what happened. Ingram comes in, he curls, and he switches. it. And you, and you tell your guards, don't get it blocked. It's up to the big. You go up, win that battle, get that offensive rebound, and punish them for switching. And Jalen Washington does just that. And that's what you want to see from him as well because he's a really good perimeter shooter. So getting down inside, doing the dirty work. Big for him to get extended minutes here for the Carolina. Davis turned the corner and now pick and pop. He can do that too. Yeah, that's what he does. He's really comfortable doing that. He starts playing inside out and look out. 
We talked to Hubert about this, about guys have to force you to play them. Playing time isn't earned. I mean, isn't given. It's earned. And you got to force a coach to play you, and you do that by getting to the offensive glass, finishing and knocking down open shots. The former top 40 recruit has the heels on a 10-0 run. Set Trimble into the game off the bench. Has the rebound. The lead in double figures. Jalen Withers with post entry and a kick on Tajay Kelly. So offensive rebound to get his first two and then pick and pop for three. They're sitting back in the lane like that. That shot's going to be there. But he's the one big that's the, I think he's the best perimeter to shoot and throw away the numbers. Washington is a guy. He can consistently beat you by knocking down that shot. And that's from your game plan defending Armando. But then they go to the bench and bring this guy in. And they're going to have to make a quick adjustment to get to him on that shot. How would you defend the R.J. Davis in ball screens? I would change it. I wouldn't give him the same look. I think he constantly very constantly very. I think sometimes you got to trap him. You just can't give him the same look. He's too good for that. It's too much experience. Like now you're in drops. He's going to eat this alive all game long. Another offensive rebound for Washington and a quick seven for the backup big. And again, same thing. He gets deep and when a guard gets that deep against drop coverage, you have to switch it. And again, you challenge your big to get in and here's create another turn over here. Davis got the tip. Tremble. Holding my breath, I thought he was about to actually dunk that. <laughs> he had a poster earlier this year, went up with bad intentions of perhaps another. Meanwhile, a scoreless crowd of four and a half minutes for Charleston Southern. It's a really good defensive uh, lineup out here for Carolina right now. Shot clock winding down on uh, DJ Patrick. <laughs> Can knock it down from deep. It's a 14-0 run for Carolina. Trimble for Ryan. In the mid-range, swirls it out. It's a good look. You can't, you know, that's a good shot. You'll live with that shot. They're going to be able to come off that screen because, again, Charles and Southern is so concerned about Carolina, they're sagging in the paint. And the guards are able to turn the corner and put pressure on the rim as much as they want. They just don't need to settle. Kelly has that one get pinned. And a hell of a ball, the arrow keeps it at this end when we come back. Well, a turnover at one end, off and running at the other. You were thinking poster, Randolph Children. Look at this jump and go here. Carolina big here early. What we talked about, he got to his mid-range shot, knocking down threes there. But I think his biggest improvement in his game, outside of his confidence, is just what you just saw. Still there on the other end, his defensive end of the floor. He's turning that in the offense, and he's just in such a groove right now. Just controlling the game for both teams, and that's, that's what you want from an elite guard, and he's proven that he is so. Two things on the point of defense. Hubert Davis said to us today at Shoot Around. The defense for R.J. Davis is now on par this year the way we need it. Then the other thing he said after the win over Oklahoma, Hubert Davis said, I think this is the first time that R.J. Davis is being celebrated, supported, and maybe notice the way he is right now. And Hubert said, I absolutely love it. Well, how did you not notice a guy that goes on a 27-point-per-game average the way he has and been so efficient in doing so? Alon Sumler hit the three out of the corner for Charleston Southern, and then Elliot Cadeau turns it over. Now, R.J. Davis has been that good. Now, we talked about it. This is the one concern that you have is when he goes to the bench right now to a bad defensive possession, no communication, switch, leave someone open, someone to knock down a three, come down, turn over there. This is what we mean when we say he's that important to this group. And they need to show that they can play without him playing at such a high level. Cadeau, the freshman, is the only starter on the floor for the heels right now. Tasha Kelly went pivoting through the lane and then missed it too strong. Joining Cadeau, it's Trimble, Withers, Washington, and Paxson Wojcik, the Brown transfer and fifth-year senior off the bench. He's got it, Aiden White. Withers thought about it, and now Cadeau. Step back. Missed the Mark Sundler, the rebound. It's Charleston Southern team's four and eight. I told you they've already underwent that coaching change, and now their third ECC opponent. Washington spiked that on Sumler. Tremble for Withers. Back out Cadeau. Wojcik rises. Can't hit. 
And tip back out to Tremble. Tremble off the bounce, goes spinning and finishing. Seth Trumbull's given his team reliable minutes. I think consistent minutes when he gets in the game. He's just an elite athlete and a big time defender. That time showing you reverse layup, finish early, that time getting in the paint. Just an impressive athlete. Ace defender since he set foot on campus as a freshman last year. Kelly had Wojcik digging down at him. And it goes out of bounds with eight left to shoot. So we showed you some Jalen Washington buckets. He's got a block as well. Really good rim protection here. Comes over weeks from the weak side. Blocks it, but more importantly, keeps it in Brown and creates the uh, fast break there. That's a big time block. Great job by him keeping it in bounds as well. One of three blocks for Carolina already. First 12 minutes. Johnson can't hit from deep, and it's a 5 for 18 shooting start for Charleston Southern. Tremble's feeling good. Had that one roll off, cleared by Patrick. Johnson still scoreless so far. He averages 17 a game. Trumbull showing his youth there. Hit the last basket. That time, no pass. Just came down, shot it again. You get any shots you want in games like this. You've gotten off to a really good offensive start. Just move the ball. Another, another young player coming out. No pass, dribble and attack again. Trumbull attacks a second time after Cano tried the first time, but was met by R.J. Johnson. Sumler who has stepped in as the two guard in the last month since that coaching change. It's on Nimley taking over as the interim head coach. Patrick trying to back down Wojcik. Kelly attacks, poked away by Baycock. Tremble looking for the trailer. Cadeau. Baseline cut. It eventually finds Zayden High. He has some good minutes against Oklahoma, match the season high with a dozen minutes off the bench. Wojcik can't hit. They caught the offensive rebound. And he will back it out to Cadeau. Cadeau is probing. Bounced it for Baycott. Hands from Duhart, saved by Wojcik. Can't hit this time from deep. Yeah, I think Hugh is going to get R.J. Davis and some of his starters back in the game. They have, they've been in control of this game, but they've let the momentum kind of get back to Charleston Southern. Not running their offense, quick shots. R.J. Davis and Cormac Ryan sitting at the table ready to come in. Johnson with his first points. Told you from Matthews, North Carolina. Guy went to Charlotte Latin and is third in the Big South in scoring. And has been very efficient from three-point range as well this year. You know it means something to him from North Carolina. You grow up wanting to play against the Tar Heels, if not play for the Tar Heels. Baycott punts. He's got a chance at a three-point play when we come back. Carolina in control. Starters will turn it for Hubert Davis after this. Here at the free throw line for Armando Baycott. Two-thirds makes. This year he's up near 80%. We asked Hubert Davis about it. He said it's confidence. It's as simple as that. Hubert said everyone's looking for what was the change. He boils it down to confidence. Now, Armando has said that he is going a little bit slower, maybe not rushing as much at the free throw line, but the routine's the same. That deep breath, the three dribbles, the high release, and it's been money this year. No jinx. I was waiting for him to miss You like thought he was going to miss that, I, I was about to tell you you jinxed him. But no, he, he's a lot more comfortable there. You can see and his shot, and he has improved in his, in his mechanics. He's wanting to expand his role, spend a little bit more time on the perimeter. Ingram off the turnover. Forces a held ball. Arrow keeps it at this end. All right, this was interesting here. On the inbound, R.J. Duhart was about to inbound. Zayden High sort of stuffed the ball, it appeared, back toward Duhart. After Temperatures had cooled a little bit. The inbound happened, then the turnover, then the held ball, and now a technical on Zayden High. So this did not elicit a tech to start. A warning from Burt Smith. And then eventually a tech. And RJ 
A.J. Johnson goes to the line, and he makes both. And this was the technical. What do you think? I guess he said something. Yeah. I'm assuming he said something there. I mean, I was looking. I didn't know what, you know, what, else, was, what else was there. And... Well, a guy who's been bringing energy when he does come into the game off the bench. True freshman from San Antonio. Big kind of bang. Yeah, you use that as a teachable moment for the other one. He has, he does play hard. And he comes in and brings a ton of energy. And again, he's one of those young guys we talked about this. Making it difficult for Huber to take him off the floor. Hubert Davis raved about the energy that Zayden Hodge brought in that game against Oklahoma. So did you see him out there? Here's Duhart banging with Baycott. Now Kelly off target. He hasn't been able to get going either. Just two points on now one of seven shooting for Tajay Kelly. Baycott with another chance at a three point play. I think this is when Amando's at his best. Baycott's at his best when he catches on the move. I think just getting to the basket, you know, picking and rolling or slipping. He's just so much more effective because he is an elite passer as well. I mean, finishing at the rim on the move makes it really difficult. He's not an above the rim guy, he's a below the rim guy. More agile than people think he is. So why does it help you when you're moving? Well, because he's he's not a he's a below the rim big, so length will bother him. He's trying to put him inside and roll it and post him. It's, it's really what's happening in Charleston Southern's big. He's so much bigger. Kelly and these guys are struggling. His length is bothering him. So he negates your length, and it gives him an angle to finish when he's facing you when he's driving. He's got the last eight points for Carolina, and he's in double figures already with ten of his own. Six rebounds as well, and now a two-big lineup for Hubert Davis as Baycott stays in, and Jalen Washington replaces Zayden High. I don't call I don't count him on those stats until he gets to 10. I'm already put him in the books for he's 10 and 10. He's so gonna he's, get a double score list to this. No, he's, he hasn't done anything yet, in my book. He's gonna when he gets his 10th rebound, his 10 point, then I'll start at what 73 rebound, uh, double doubles, I should say, yeah, yeah, already in his career. Automatic. As soon as he puts on the jersey, just put it in the book. Patrick's feeling good. And Barry's another. DJ Patrick's second three, and he's got eight points to pace the Buccaneers. They're in this 1-3-1 to kind of get Carolina out of their rhythm. They've used this 5% of the time this year. Big count from Davis. That's the way you attack it. RJ Davis is crazy. You know he's got this skip. Driving down the gap when you know 1-3-1. Can't allow straight line drives like that. Coming up on five to go first half. The lead at 17 for the Tar Heels. Against Charleston Southern, who you see has four wins, three of them against non D1 competition. And they're having trouble just getting into their offense, whether in the full court or in the half court right now. <laughs> yes, hard to run offense at half court. I think the only guy affected from that range is Seth, Seth Curry. <laughs> Johnson has it blocked by Baycott with point two left on the shot clock. That's why this Carolina team is, when they're defending, they're as good as any team in the country because of that. Not many teams can switch a center and look late clock and stay in front of a point guard. Two tenths of a second and a lot necessary and a shot clock violation. We told you they loved the defense last time out against Oklahoma, and that's carried over to the first half today. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Randy Ayers ran by. One of the vets. You got a big time crew here. Cormac Ryan for three. He's a streaky guy. Great side. He's knocked down his first. I was surprised to see he struggled from three early. He's a career 36% three point shooter. Shooting at 29% uh, so far this year, but I expect him to continue his mechanic wise. I think he's textbook. 34% for his career. Of course, two years ago at Notre Dame had that big season where he shot 41% from three. And a good defender. Whoa! Ingram went somersaulting over Baycott. Kelly scored, and hopefully, both Harrison Ingram and Armando Baycott are all right. And they appear to be. Whew. Got smiles from those two. And that is a welcome sight. Ingram over the Virginia Tech. And it wraps up with a game we'll be at number 16, Duke, and Notre Dame from South Bend. All right, first half action here so far at the Smith Center looks like this.
Carolina up by 18. Charleston Southern slow offensively here this last handful of minutes. Carolina's rebounded better. And they're taking care of the basketball. And Char Charleston Southern has struggled because this Carolina defense is five block shots and five steals. They've been really active in that end of the floor. Another offensive rebound. And it rolled out for Harrison Ingram. Yeah, active on the glass. And excellent defense. And the Heels have protected the basketball to your point. Just two turnovers these first 17 minutes. Only fouled once as well, and that was the tech on Zayden High. Patrick for three. That's his third, and he's up to 11. Guy who started out in junior college, then spent a couple of years in South Florida, but didn't start there. And last year missed a bunch of time with an ankle injury. Washington has had a great first half. You got to find him. You got to find him more. I mean, I know their defense game plan is to play in drops. But he's a guy. He's different than any big that they have on that roster. He is really comfortable behind that line. And the difference is he's capable of beating you from the three-point line. You got to get to him. Ten points now, and he's in double figures for the second time this year. At 11 against UC Riverside. Good hands from R.J. Davis. Davis with entry for Washington. What a half for Jalen Washington. Picks up there in the transition defense. No one picks him up. He's doing it inside and out for the Tar Heels early in the first half. One of the things Hubert Davis said to us earlier today, can we get a little more production out of our four spot? Yeah. Well, playing Bacon in Washington yeah. looks pretty good here in the first half. I think from a physical standpoint, the four spot is a lot more natural for Jalen. Jalen Washington. RJ Johnson with a tough step back, too. Why is that? Well, because it's let, you know, he's, he's still, he's recovered. He had injuries in high school. And he's just not a big guy. Riding down the lane. He's comfortable facing the basket, squaring up. And when he shoots it this well, he's going to dictate matchups because you don't want to switch it because of the size. Sumler being hawked by Ryan. Tough follow away comes up short. Davis pushes. He's got six assists already. Drives, takes contact. And we'll go to the free throw line on a foul from R.J. Johnson. Jalen Washington has a dozen here in the first half. His career high is 13 last year against Virginia. Taking what the defense gives him there. Drive and kick, knock it down. Second trade tonight, and here just a mix up in coverage, and won't get a dunk any easier than that. What's his ceiling with how skilled he is offensively and the way he can shoot it? You know, it's hard to tell right now. I mean, he's, I, you know, there's a lingering effect because his injury was a second knee injury he had prior to him ever stepping up the floor. He hadn't played much in high school and literally spent much of last year recovering from that as well. So it's hard to tell, but. Skill-wise, he has it all. It's just a matter of him being comfortable and how his body feels going forward. But he can definitely shoot it, and he's definitely more comfortable facing the basket. I mean, we had coaches around the ACC last year who would say to us, you see that Washington kid? He scares you. The way he can face he, up? He scares you because he's, you know, at his size, at literally 6'10 or so in his length, I mean, he, he, he allows Carolina, he can be a backup five or a stretch four. Charleston yeah. Southern's got to get it over, and they do to Duhart. Nine seconds into the timer. And now Heath drives and scores. Fouled by Trimble and a chance at three for the sophomore backup guard from Atlanta, Gaddis Heath the third. As you get set to ring in the new year, we'll have a women's basketball quadruple header Sunday right here on ACC Network. Starts at noon Eastern, number 21 Florida State against Wake Forest. Then number 14 Notre Dame against Syracuse, followed by number 19 Louisville against Miami. We finish the day with number three NC State and Virginia. So coming up on this final minute before halftime, Ingram knocks it down. Ingram missed his first two. Knocked that one down. He's been shooting it much better this year than he has in his entire career. I mean, up to 44%. He's only a 31% three-point shooter. And getting looks like that, he's going to continue to knock him down at a high, at a high rate. 
He had said before the season that he thought his efficiency from three would increase from where it was at Stanford. 31% from three in those two years. He's banging with Kelly, who had another one roll off, and it's cleared by James Okunkwo, getting some run here in the first half. And Hubert Davis will take his use it or lose it timeout before halftime. We'll take it with him. 30 seconds and then back for the final 24 of the first half. Uh, Baycott called it a must win game for them. Well, it was from a confidence standpoint. They had dropped back to back games against UConn and Kentucky. And you needed to win like that against a team that was ranked in the top 10 and to, just to say, hey, that we belong. You know, you lose a third win there, you're losing confidence. There's a belief with yourself. And this Carolina team, and we'll get into that in the second half, they have a heck of a, a conference uh, schedule to start the ACC. Cadell. Okakwo tried to follow. Ingram left it short. And we will head to halftime. Carolina puts up 51 in the first half. They lead by 23. That, because more importantly now in this generation, not everyone works without the ball. They either work with it or without it. And he has done both, you can tell. And, and it's showing off here. He's, he's, he's really fun to watch right now, playing at an extremely high level. Well, meanwhile, Charleston Southern just 28 points in the first half for this four and eight club. Seven turnovers to five assists. They're trying to get their studs going. RJ Johnson, six points on two of seven shooting. And Tajay Kelly, their number two scorer, four points on two of eight shooting. Foul goes against Tajay Kelly. Fortunately for those guys, they have some of the better perimeter defenders against them. Cormac Ryan is just such an underrated defender, and he's been that way for quite some time. And, and when he's dialed in, he's as good of an on-ball defender as there is. There's Baycott traveling the call on Armando Baycott, and only the third turnover for the Heels. Yeah, I thought he got away with one earlier. Just got, didn't get his feet ready, established, and shuffled the puppies before he decided to make his move there, and that time they got called. North Carolina extends full court pressure again on Charleston Southern. This is something the Buccaneers really struggled with when they got blown out at NC State last month. And they had 22 turnovers against the pack. RJ Johnson gives it up to Kelly, who flips for Alon Subler, turn of the corner. Now he's a great story. He told you a sixth straight start in that time. He's getting 16 points per game. Son Emily said to us today that a lot of the credit goes to their staff since the change. Bring up Sumler as Ingram responds with the three. Yeah, he's something is a big part of you know the excitement about Charleston Southern as they head into conference play in the next game against Presbyterian. And just coming in and just shooting the basketball well, scores it on all three levels. The length I think of this game is bothering him some, and but he can really score. RJ Duhart steps out and sinks one, his first points. Six foot nine, fifth year senior who's a heart and soul type of guy for the Bucks. Cadeau off the bounce. Driving on Kelly. Got his own miss and follow. First points for the freshman from West Orange, New Jersey. I think he needs to be more aggressive. He has a reputation of being a Kendall Marshall type of pass for his guy. As he get in the conference play, he'll learn that teams will start giving him that shot because there's so much, you know, so much scoring ability around him. There's your defense for Cormac Ryan. He stripped Kelly. Davis spins out of the corner. Davis attacks and finishes. R.J. Davis putting on a show. When he's shooting at that level, you got to honor him. You got to get up and pressure him. He's shooting so well from behind the line, and he's just driving into bodies. And Forcing the referees to, you know, to, to make calls, and when they don't, he's giving them angles to finish like that. Another foul as well. That was Anthony and R.J. Johnson. He can't get a touch. Instead, it's Kelly. Good hands, Cadeau. Davis attacks again, and R.J. Johnson stripped him. Heck of a play by Johnson there. Mm. R.J. Davis coming at you ahead of steam, not only to get the strip, but staying in bounds and throw it to a teammate. Johnson off the bounce. Guy who started his career a couple of years at Holy Cross. That was second year in Charleston. 
Sumler gets a switch from Ryan. Kelly wants it. Kelly on the follow away, not there. His struggles continue now, two of nine shooting. Ingram. Timeout, Charleston Southern. No one turns defense into offense better than North Carolina. They've been the best at it, I think, that I've seen this year, and they're continuing at Harrison Ingram and the heels off and running. Defense to offense and a third three for a two-hour pregame show, followed by a command center broadcast of the game. Multiple camera angles and real-time player and team stats. Then after the game against number six, Georgia stick around for the ACC Huddles postgame show. With Randolph Childress, Mike Monaco here in Chapel Hill. Carolina's in control against Charleston Southern. The number nine team in the country trying to get to nine and three before it's back to ACC action next week. Off the R.J. Johnson miss, here's Elliot Cadeau out there with Ryan, Baycott, Ingram, and Davis. The starters out of halftime still for Hubert Davis. Cadeau knocks down the three. All right, you said more aggressive. What's that look like? Just like that, taking open the shots for one, and but taking his type of shots, I think he can be really effective in transition. There's been a couple of times he's just come down trying to run plays. He has to keep you honest defensively. If not, when things break down, he can't allow you just to sag off and help on all the other guys. And just being able to do that, just knock down open shots and be more aggressive in the transition. His first three-point make in more than a month. Duhart on the block off the glass to respond. And even that move, he didn't shoot it, but he put pressure on you. You make a mistake, he can turn the corner. Just keeping you honest. Davis short. And a good blockout by Gaddis Heat for Charleston Southern. There's difficult parts of the game as well. When you're up 29, you know, you don't, the score is 0 0. You got to continue to play and defend. Johnson got his own miss and found Patrick. Trying to knock down another three. Got three of them already and recovers defensively. Nicely done by DJ Patrick. Sumler kicks. Heath drives. Got his own miss. Missed the follow. And then over the top. And it'll stay at this end of the floor. Well, Elliot Cadeau attacked earlier. Now he knocks it down from long range. But this year, their fewest rebounds per game in more than 20 years, and only a plus two and a half rebounding margin. Before today, you saw out rebounded in three straight games. Yeah, it's it's critical for this team, and because when they go to their lineup defensively, they're really good and they're versatile and they switch a lot. You know? A lot of times, it's up to their guards to be better rebounding, and Amando will be, be pulled away from the rim. And, you know, the tendency is to sit back and say, "Hey, let the bigs get it," because Amando, when you play with a dominant rebounder. You don't always go yourself, and these guards have got to. When you do the switching and everything that, that a lot of teams do, it's, it's imperative that your guards rebound the ball. What did Hubert Davis say to us today at shoot around? I talk to them about rebounding <laughs> 50,000 <laughs> times every day. They're, they're listening today. And on cue, we jinx them. They give up an offensive rebound, but they've done a really good job. They were yeah. prior to that, they were plus 14 on the glass, and that's a good sign, and they take care of the basketball. Good hands by Davis, who takes the ball and a chance at three. Oh, that's just clinical on both ends from R.J. Davis. Just does a great job. He curls the screen, can't get back in front. Agrees to turn over, gets back in. I mean, look at this. Coming around the corner, he fights. Tip to the head. It's just a great catch and finish there. Didn't have time to gather himself and dribble. Just catches it. I think the dribble was more to try to get himself, get balanced. To know where you are and finish, that's a big time shot. 17 points, eight assists, and a career high five steals for RJ Davis. Did we say he was good? I thought we said he was good. I think so. Yeah, I think so. All right, so give me your short list of the best guards in college basketball. Him, Tyler Cole. Tyler Cole. I think Wade Taylor. Wade Taylor. I mean, 
game, and you put me on the spot, I know I'm going to forget a few guys, but Tyron Shannon, obviously, it's a very different situation now, but he had been playing at that level. And I, and I, I put him in more of the point guard category. I don't yeah. think that's Tyron Shannon's role anyway. Um, Maybe more so. Yeah, I, I think those three guys, what I'd say, are the best three. And uh, RJ Stevens at Colorado State's been really good. He has been. He has been. I mean, there's so many guys. But I don't think you can say any of them have played better. No, no. Than RJ did. No one's played better with the level of competition that they play. And I think as we get into conference play with everybody else, we'll see he's shown us against that stretch when no one else in the country has played seven straight games like that. He's averaged 27 points a game, 26 going that stretch. And he's proven to you, like, you know, at big time games, I can put this team on my back. And he's just playing at a level. There's so much confidence and freedom that he's playing with. Coming up on 13 and a half to go in the second half. Tremble trying to lock up Alon Sumler. Pivoting on the baseline and Tremble matched him. Tremble pushes, drives, finishes. I think Tremble's their best perimeter defender. I mean, his athleticism and strength just allows them to switch and guard bigger guys. He apologized to R.J. Davis there. Tell him I could. I, I, For not kicking next, it out. Yeah, maybe next time I'll kick it out to you. <laughs> Those are good problems to have. They're great problems to have under. when they come off of turnovers and steals your defense creating. RJ Johnson. Ryan is right there with him, but a foul goes against Carolina. He did a great job of moving his feet, keeping the ball in front of him. Just tried to block the shot. Second on Ryan, and it puts RJ Johnson at the line. Tom Nibley looking up the scoreboard. Still with a long way to go here in Chapel Hill. This is what's different about this team is their ability to defend and continue to defend. Up 34. Hey, next Saturday right here on ACC Network, our first basketball triple header of the new year. Men's side, Virginia takes on NC State. Starts us off at 2 Eastern. Then Florida State. Huh? Yeah. Hey, yo, Let's hope for some good weather. South Bend this time of the year, man, it can be cold. Let's just hope for some good good food, good meal on yeah. the Mike Monaco. What do you think, corn dance? Yeah, not a bad choice. Now, you've been there before. Time. It was good. It was good. An old Mike Bray favorite. Davis goes spinning. Bouncing. With it! RJ Davis is just dominating his game. He's just getting wherever he wants to get. Finding his teammates with his ninth assist. Kelly backs it out for Heath. Can't hit. Give it to Davis. Let four go. Oh, Washington tried to rip it down. Heath went up to match him. Davis swirls one out. And a foul away from the ball on the rebounding action goes against Charleston Southern. How about R.J. Davis? 17 points, nine assists, and he's done it defensively as well with five steals. Yeah, he's dominating this game, both into the floor. But in the offensive end, like I said, he's, he's, he's just a complete package. He's playing with so much confidence. He's attacking you off the dribble. He's making the right plays the right reads. He's finishing at a high level right now. They we're trying to run him off the screen there. Couldn't get their spacing organized to free Davis. Left alone. Counting. Can't do that! Counting. <laughs> Just knew that was going in. The groove he's in right now, the way he's playing. Can't make a mistake like that and leave him wide open. 20. For R.J. Davis, Johnson for Patrick. Teardrop, no. Washington, the rebound is fifth. Tremble, driving, and yeah, couldn't finish. Carolina has doubled up. Charleston Southern still 11 minutes to go. That's the one thing I think, you know, when they go back and they watch film, that Hubert's going to speak to those guys about. They've had quite a bit of those plays where they you don't mind your guards attacking, but you can't have four or five possessions in the conference play where your guards don't move the ball and just come down. There's no extra passes in their shots. 
Washington the roll man. And he gets fouled by Kelly. And that is four on Tajay Kelly. One of the studs for Charleston Southern. Davis dishing and scoring as well. She's doing it all there. The drop pass comes down. Withers banging the baseline jump with Carolina big here in the second half. He said that R.J. Davis has dominated this game. 20 points, nine assists, five steals. He is playing at such a high level. He is. Uh, I mean, just being really efficient with the basketball. He three or six from behind the arc. Had missed a free throw. And again, it's just not a guard playing better in the country. And you can't use the argument that he's playing against Charleston Southern. I mean, he's done this against high major competition and just really, really impressive and fun to watch him play at this at such an elite level. Check out the way he has played this year. And it's free. It's confident. It's with leadership. Armando Baycott has told R.J. Davis, this is your team. And the way Davis is playing backs that up. Check out the, the tattoo. Just be you. <laughs> He's doing that this year. He is. I mean, so much has been said about he and Caleb Love and a year ago and them playing together. I think they both have been really good apart. They were good together as well, and they're even better apart right now. No guards playing better than this guy with the ball in his hand right now. Still with 10 and a half to go in the second half here in Chapel Hill. 75-40. Washington was tangled with Duhart, so it's a Wojcik turnover. Hey, as you get set to ring in the new year, we'll have a women's basketball quadruple header for you. Sunday, right here on ACC Network, starts at noon Eastern. Number 21, Florida State. Then number 14, Notre Dame in action against Syracuse. 19th ranked Louisville against Miami. And the day finishes with number three, NC State. And the Hoos. Charleston Southern trying to handle this Carolina pressure. What have you like most that the Bucks have and that they'll carry forward in the league play in the Big South? Well, I think this is a tough matchup for him because Kelly is usually has a he'll have a physical size advantage when they get into conference play. That that was negated the length and the size entirely from Carolina negated that and they're struggling. But their guard play is really good. We've seen that we have we have a sample size of that. And having a guy like Tajay Kelly when things break down, you can throw it inside. I think they'll surprise the when they get the conference. 2.1 seconds to shoot it here. Sumler does and hits. They got that guy coming yes, on as well. He can score it. I mean, make no mistake. Don't judge him by tonight. I mean, coming in tonight, he was 16 points his last five games, but he can score it on all three levels. Withers for three to answer. And we told you that Alon Sumler has been freed up, is what Son Nimley said to us earlier today. He told him at the time of the coaching change, you're our starting two guard until you decide you're yes. not. Yes. And hey, if you're going to shoot it 17 times a game, which Sumler basically has, you better be in the gym. As Son Nibley said to us, that's law. <laughs> but you know what? That's what happens when you play with a coach that allows you to do that. And we're seeing that with on the other end with RJ Davis. I mean, it's like, hey, this is your team. Putting the ball in your hand. Go play. If I see you working on those shots, I got no problem with you taking those shots in the game. And you're seeing that even with Charleston Southern. Saw R.J. Davis check out. He's got his first career points, assists, double-double. 20 points, 10 assists in 26 minutes without a turnover as he sits. There's Jaden Thompson, freshman from Concord, North Carolina. Sumner, we told you, will shoot it about 17 times a game. <laughs> and he is making them right now. Knocked down his last two bombs from behind the three-point line. And you got to get to him. Cadeau. And this is what Hubert wants to see out of this lineup, too. He's, he can, he wants this group to continue to defend. There's no let up. I think he'll get Amando out here shortly after he picks up another rebound and gets his double-double. Kado, Trimble, Wojcik, Withers, and Baycott, one through five for the heels. With Washington, indeed, getting ready to check in. Duhart banks in a um, three. Second three of the ball game for R.J. Duhart, who had four all season. Coming into tonight. Huber's not happy with that. That's the third three in a row. Sumler's knocked down two, and Duhart gets in and knocks down his second three of the night. And 
can't take your foot off the gas. Too much time left, and there's still guys in this rotation that that have planned for Hubert that have to continue to show him they want to continue to to play a lot. And Wojcik is one and wants more minutes. Withers is another one, and, and Washington has had a good night. Two more for Jalen Washington. He's got a new career high with 15. That's why he scares you at his length and his ability to stretch the floor. Sumler's hot. He checked third three in a row for Alon Sumler, and he's got 19 points. Washington going to work on Duhart, and the confidence is rising for the sophomore. It is, and even there, you can tell he's not comfortable with his back to the basket as much, and that's okay. Just turn and face at his size. He could just elevate right over you. Sumler. But Trimble pressed down on him. <laughs> Kelly follows. Washington comes over to block there. Kelly does a great job of getting inside and tipping it in. Ball screen from Washington. Trimble pulls up. Just so comfortable right now and that not settling. Getting there, shooting that little that little floater. Coming up on the final seven minutes of the second half. Kelly, he's got a unique game. That was his descriptor to us when we chatted with the pregame. <laughs> yeah. Coaching staff has called it unconventional. And again, 6'7", 253. Very talented. Got his heat, the rebound. And he pushes. Stops, pops. Can't hit Washington the rebound. He's got 17 and 7 tonight. Cadeau moves it. Wojcik off the shot fake and one. And he got hit in the chops too. He earned the and one the hard way there. Great drive by Cadeau and finished the find and Wojcik paid for it. Gets in there, pump fakes, throws the contact. Well, you pay for that one, Carolina up big. Got popped, he's bleeding, and he's getting attention on the bench, trying to check back in. Yeah, you can see him come down right there. Clearly accidental by, by Duhart there, tried to challenge and went in the air, and Wojcik made a big time play and just got popped there. Looked like Jalen Withers was checking out the handiwork and where Wojcik got hit and where he needed the attention. So Conquo comes in off the bench. Carolina's going to elect to have him shoot the free throws. Just the basketball play is what Roger Ayers came over and told us when they checked out the foul. Yeah, I didn't think anything was intended. He was in the air and. It's a natural reaction too when someone goes into your chest, your arms come down, and unfortunately, you got, you got the elbow across the eye. Let's hope he's okay. Looks like he has gone down the tunnel. No sense in bringing him back with the lead where it is for the heels. To throw the rebound, coming up on six to go as Trimble pushes. Cadeau thought about it. Trying to take Sumler off the bounce. Oh, nice finish. Is a big time move there. I was just thinking when he caught it, that's the shot he needs to take. It's open in the flow of the offense, but when you get creative and get in the paint and finish like that. Nine for Cadeau. Sumler short. Cadeau the rebound. The quick hit ahead for Tremble. Couldn't finish. Rebound high. Left to low. And how about the offensive rebound from Ingram? He rises. Can't connect. <laughs> Hubert's not happy with that possession. He loves the offensive rebound. He's wanting his team to pull it back out and take better shots. And... Kelly got bumped. Heat. Back out to Hart. Ingram the rebound. It's opened up here these last few possessions with five to go. Cadeau trying to find Okakwo. Diving on the floor, Sumler. 
And it'll stay with Carolina. ACC Network's got number five Florida State covered in Miami for the Capital One Orange Bowl. Tomorrow, 2 Eastern, the Huddle Crew with a two hour pregame show. Then it's a command center broadcast at 4 Eastern for the matchup with Georgia. 7 o'clock, the Huddle Gang is back for the postgame show. Creighton Lebo has checked into the game. Third game for him this year, getting some burn. Okakwo, and it's strict, it stays with the heels. All right, so it's coming fast for Carolina after this. You go back into ACC play. You've already played once, remember already, a win here against Florida State. And beginning on Tuesday, it's road games. This team is, and you know, it's weird to say, but Carolina has not had a true road game this year. Yeah. And they're going to open up ACC, well, not open up ACC play, they're going to open up New Year's with three straight road games in the ACC. It's a brutal stretch to start. I think it gives this team a chance that we know they're very good. I think it's a chance to see how good this team can be. If they can come out of that stretch winning two of those three games, I, I think it, you really have to start thinking about this team could go from good to great. From very good to great. I think they, they got all the other pieces, and being able to take their show on the road would be impressive. At Pitt Tuesday, then at Clemson Saturday, and then State Carolina at PNC. So, yes, yeah, six neutral site games so far yeah. in the Heels. We know how hard the schedule has been. Yes. One of the most difficult non conference schedules in the entire country. Arguably the most difficult among power conference teams. And for as hard as that was, then you got this to start yeah. league play. Again. Yeah. And it's going to be different. You don't know how your guys are going to respond. I mean, some of those neutral site games for Carolina is home games. They travel well. And the UConn game in New York wasn't. That was pro UConn. But they'll definitely, the zoo will be rocking <laughs> in Pitt. And Pitt's had their number lately. Three straight, five of six. And that's not going to be an easy game at all. And I, I believe there's not a team playing any better in the ACC than Clemson. They're really good. Uh, that, that's 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 difficult to play there, no matter where, win. But this team, that team, I, I think is as good as any team in the ACC. Is PJ Hall a first-team All-American right now? He's playing as well as any. I mean, he has competition if you're going to go by position, but he's right there. He's been effective with so many guys. And, you know, we talk so much when you get to those bigs of Zach Eady and what he's done. And, but PJ Hall has been right there. I heard the guys. And in the halftime show, Justin and Joel talking about Clemson tonight, taking care of Radford. Big day for Joe Girard for the Tigers. He's why I think they're so they're just different. They got a guy like that. His experience, his ability to score, it just changes the dynamic of that team. Withers in the heels force a shot clock violation. 3:33 to go. Carolina cruising. looks like this around the league. Carolina, of course, ninth. Duke, 16th. We were talking about Clemson. They're 18th. Tomorrow's action, by the way, Pitt at Syracuse. Virginia at Notre Dame, a game you can watch right here on ACC Network at noon. And also in league play, Virginia Tech at Wake, 2 o'clock over on ESPN2. All conference games are big this time of year. And, and you know, it's, it's time. You know, it's the most exciting part about the season. You get the season going, and now everyone's through their non-conference slate. Well, here at Chapel Hill, coming up on three minutes to go in a game in which Carolina's dominated out of their holiday break layoff. Trimble scores two more. They've looked the part. They've yeah. really done it defensively against Charleston Southern. I think the only question mark Hubert's got to have with his group is going to be how good will we be offensively when R.J. Davis is struggling? Though that hasn't happened. And it's it happened off. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, but I, it's bound to happen at some point. You know, once he gets thrown, and that guy to his right is more than capable of lifting up the load and, and carrying his team as he's done so many times in the past. But there's so many different work weapons. I think there's multiple guys. And, and they're, they're getting their bench together with Washington and Trumbull. Oh, oh, where they're just starting to figure, figure some things out. and. 
They're getting contributions from their freshmen. So we'll, we'll see what happens with this team. I mean, most teams don't expand their rotation as the season goes on. But again, I think Cuba said today, if guys force him to play them, he's going to play them. If they earn it in practice. And again, there's not many off nights coming for RJ Davis. <laughs> Tonight, with how good he's been, he's got any points, 10 assists, no turnovers, plus the five steals. And how about this? Would you believe that RJ Davis with the 20 points and 10 assists? First Carolina player to do that in the game since Kendall Marshall 11 years ago. 20 points, 10 assists in a game. That's surprising. I mean, with that, the elite players that they've had at that position. He's got 20 plus in eight straight games. First guy to do that for Carolina since Psycho T did it in nine straight in 08 09. He's leading the ACC in scoring, and Armando's leading the ACC in rebounding. The last time they had a pair do that was Rashad McCants and his assistant coach over there. <laughs> Sean May. Good company. Carolina sitting on 99 after two more from Trimble gives him a dozen. He has matched his career high. Yeah. Sumler on a step through, couldn't finish. And Carolina brings it up. Looking for 100. Withers, handoff. Okakwo finishes. And the fans go berserk because it's two for one. Yes. Sausage biscuits. Yes. I want cheese on mine. Bring it. I want cheese. Add cheese on mine. Where's my coupon? We're fans, right? We get to, we're here. Nobody has been this excited for biscuits <laughs> since Rebecca Welton. And you, because not many people have seen you eat. And pound for pound, I'm betting my money on Mike Monaco. You really? I would. I appreciate it. I would. I put in work. I, you do. I've seen you do it. I've, I had seen a person as small as you eat as much as you eat <laughs> in my life. It's impressive. Thompson gets fouled. All right, it's not like I'm like five foot four. I, pay some respect. Do it, while you, do it while you can. I'm five foot ten. Come on. Yeah, that's average man height, I guess. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's good. All right, we didn't all play D1. We didn't all get into the state's Hall of Fame here hey, for hey, athletics. Hey, hey, I mean, it happens, you know? It, it. <laughs> I'm going to put you in a hot dog eating contest next year. Let's see if that. Uh, I'm nah, that's money no fun. That's not fun. That's gross, too. Oh, like, you got to dip it in the, the water, stop. the soda, whatever it is. I respect Joey Chestnut. I just don't okay. want to be like him. You just eat everything else. Yeah, it? yeah. Okay, okay. That's all right. Anyway, food segment's over. Yeah. 90 seconds to go, folks. <laughs> Great Limbo. Too strong from deep. Got his heat, the rebound. Playing hard here in the waning minutes for Charleston Southern. We told you they're going to get back into league action as well. Kick things off in the Big South Wednesday for them against Presbyterian. Hard fall there for Zayden High. You know, for Son Nimley, an Irm head coach, again, he took over a month ago. Tonight's his sixth game since replacing his old college coach, yeah. Barclay Radabaugh. Son Nimley said to us today, the first week, it was about mindset. And it was about culture. And you hear EDIG7 a lot from them. Every day is game seven. He said to us today, we didn't really have an identity. And he's been, it's, it's not a, it's a difficult situation, you know, to, to come in like that and, and take over in the middle of the year and, and try to get this team to improve the way they have. And they've done so. They've responded. They're, they responded to him. I know you look at the score tonight. This is an elite, a, a really good Carolina basketball team, and it's a tough matchup for them to come in here and win this game. Carolina's playing really well, but I, I think they'll do damage in conference play in the Big South, and guys that enjoy playing for them, and they, they respond to them. They just came across a far better team tonight that's playing at a high level and starting to click on all cylinders. Off the shot fake. The dish from Landry. 
And Okonkwo gets fouled. Yeah, that's the road ahead for Charleston Southern. He's going to fall to four and nine. We told you Carolina back to ACC action Tuesday at Pitt, the game you could watch out ESPN. Hey, one last note on R.J. Davis. Told you 20 points, 10 assists, five steals. The first 20 point, 10 assists, five steal game ever in wow. Carolina history. Wow. And that young man is having himself a year. He really is. He's fun to watch. It's great to see. Just a great young man. And he is playing a point guard position as well as anyone in college basketball. The vibes are pretty good over on the Carolina sideline. And why wouldn't they be? Coming out of the holiday break with as thorough and convincing an effort as they had tonight. I think Hubert Davis is going to be pretty pleased with this one from both ends. Jumper goes down for Quentin Bolton. Getting some run here in the waiting seconds. 105 to 60. Carolina wins and is 9 and 3. And they get the dub in their final non-conference game of the season. The way you wanted to handle things coming off that.